Hi there guys, my name is Taylor and I'm from NetBeansTutorials.com and in this video I'll be showing you guys how to perform the bubble sort algorithm in Java. Um, basically what the bubble sort algorithm will accomplish in your code is it will sort all of your array integer values from least to greatest or greatest to least. Um, now that does sound pretty simple but uh, it can be quickly overwhelming to anyone who's not on familiar terms with arrays, fors, or whiles. Now granted, those are all simple concepts, but they're all working together to create something a bit greater here. So uh, it is an algorithm, so it can be a little much to take in. So let me know if you have any questions. Leave them here in the comments, either here or on my site at netbeanstutorials.com, and I'll help you through them. Okay, first things first. Let's go over what exactly we need our code to do before we go into the code itself and our inner logics. Okay, here is my example array. I'm going to apply bubble sort to it and I'm going to make my code in such a way that bubble sort is going to go least to greatest and not greatest to least. Okay, well first off it needs to know what index it's on and it's going to compare the first two indexes and then the next two indexes and then the next two indexes. So it's going to run a total of three times on an array of a length of four. So the first two indexes. It will say to itself, is 5 less than 4? Is the first index less than the second? No? Well, it needs to be. So switch them. Okay. Now that they're switched, I'll move on to the next index, which means just plus 1 on both sides. So it'll go, is 5 less than 9? Yes. Okay. Continue on to the next index. Add 1 to each side of comparisons. Is 9 less than 8? No. Okay, well then switch them. Okay, that's fantastic. Now we have a sorted array. Um, so, in a nutshell, that's how it's going to work. It is an exchange algorithm. It just moves the numbers around in between everything and until it's a sorted array, in which case it terminates. So we're going to need a way for it to check itself to see if it's truly sorted. And that's going to be accomplished by one of our while tools. But before we get into that, let's go over the logic, how we're going to implement, how it knows what index it's on, and then to continue on if it needs to. Well, <coughs> the logic is going to be contained in a for and if statement that are going to be inside each other. Our for statement is going to keep track of what index it's on. And if you don't know already, the for contains three arguments and its parameters. They are separated by semicolons and they are the parameters necessary to run. Oh, let's go ahead and declare our array. I totally forgot. Um, let's do it in the main method and it will be... Uh, where's that one I wrote down? Eight. This is a good one because it forces your code to run twice because on its first run through it, everything won't be sorted it'll just be jumbled around 8 will switch in 5 and then 5 will switch in 3 but you'll have 3 right here instead of at the very front and 2 will only be right here instead of at the very front so you'll need it to run twice on this array which is why it's a good array to apply bubble sort to in your practice Okay. Now, again, I said that the for loop is going to keep track of what index you're on. Um, this will run only the first time the for loop is accessed, so int will be equal to zero upon its first iteration. i is less than number.length minus one. This condition must be true for the for loop to execute. If it is not, it terminates and runs to the next line, which is this. It terminates. It just runs to your next line. Um, Okay, and then after its first iteration, it will add one to i. So all these conditions work together to tell the computer how many times the for loop has run. And we're going to use it to keep track of what index it's on. Right below our for, we're going to type if number, and here's that i again, i is greater than number i plus one then perform the swap okay now let's go over what I just typed if number i 
is greater than number i plus 1. Now, the code that I have set up here is I need to sort my code from le my array from least to greatest. So if it's if the first index, the zero index, as indicated by the first iteration of 4, in which case this will be equal to 0, and this will be equal to 0 plus 1, so it would check the f array 0, which is 8 in this case. Let's do that thing I did. Okay. It would change, it would check the first index, the zero index, which returns a value of 8. If 8 is greater than 5, then perform a swap. And then it'll swap them out if they need to be. Now, you'll recall the way I performed the array switch was like this. I just went, okay, is 5 less than 4? Back in my example. No, then switch them. And I just deleted the 5, put a 4 there, moved to the right, deleted the 4, and put a 5 there. Well, that's exactly what Java does, except it can't retrieve numbers in memory like I can. Once it deletes an array number via a swap, it's no longer there. So we need to create a temporary storage variable that's going to contain the number that would otherwise be deleted via our swap. So we're going to type int temp up here, and we're going to declare it. So if 8 is greater than 5, then that means that they need to be switched. So we're going to create our temp and say is temp is going to be equal to number i plus 1, which is equal to 5 in our first iteration. Store 5 in temp. Now we're going to say number i plus 1 equals number i. Okay, now what that's going to do is it's going to put the 8 in 5's place. Which is going to result in 5's deletion. It's going to result in the first index, I'm sorry, the second index, the f 1 index. It's going to be deleted and it's going to look like that at this line of code. So now we're going to need to uh, access our temp. We're going to say number i equals temp. And then that would put 5 over here. And that would create our first swap. But now our int is only going to run four times. And let me go through what that would look like if it went through. This is a functioning bubble sort method. Don't get me wrong. This works. It will run four times, which is the maximum amount necessary because you swap here once. You swap here a second time, you swap here a fourth time, I'm sorry, a third time, and then you swap here a fourth time. And that swaps all your numbers. You don't need a fifth time. If you do, it will crash. So that's why it's number.length minus one. Okay. Um, let me show you what this would look like upon its completion of this for loop that it would run for to four swaps. Is 8 less than 5? No, switch them. Is 8 less than 3? No, switch them. Is 8 less than 2? No, switch them. Is 8 less than 9? Yes, then leave it. Okay, now our program terminates because it has run four, time, four times and this condition is no longer true, so the for loop terminates. Go to the next line. Okay, and that is uh, not a sorted array. So um, we need to have some way for this to keep repeating itself, maybe once or twice, until it successfully sorts the entire array. And if this array is hundreds of integers long, then it's going to need something a bit more concrete than run three times. It's going to need like a while loop that's going to check itself to see if it's sorted. And what's a good way to see if it's sorted? Well, we could put, we could do a while up here, 
that's going to tell us that whether or not it's fixed. We're going to use a boolean. Boolean fixed equals false. While boolean equals false. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, fixed equals false. Then we will run our for and if. until the end of time. But where's our check going to be? Well, it's going to be in this if. If this if is accessed, then that means that our array isn't sorted. Isn't that right? That means that this run through still had a swap that needed to take place. Because this is checked four times. One, two, three, and four. If there is ever a swap, I want it to run through the while again. So I'm going to change fixed to false. And then right here, under the while, I'm going to change fixed to true. And what that looks really confusing, but it is uh, it does work. Basically how it works the while is equal to false upon its first iteration because it says so right here. It has no idea th of this, so just ignore that for now. While fixed is equal to false, run to next line because false is equal to false. I mean, fixed is equal to false. Next line, fixed is equal to true. Okay, now it runs through the for. Now it runs through the if. If this if is successful, and it tells the program at any point in time through any of its swap checks then it will run this which will make our while keep repeating so after it does our 8 less than is 8 less than is 8 greater than 5 store 5 and temp put the 8 in 5's place number i equals temp fixed is equal to false because this iteration of our if of our four was not perfect. It had to do one swap. So I want it to keep going through the while until it's perfect, until there's no swaps necessary, until this if is no longer accessed. If the if is no longer accessed, that means our array is sorted and our while will terminate because its termination is dictated by this line right here. Okay, now we're going to need to type something that's going to tell us whether or not our array is truly sorted. So right outside of our while, we're going to type for int i equals zero i number dot length. We need some way to display our array, right? So this is going to print it. Okay, it's going to print all of our array integers. And hold on. I need to fix my array that I massacred earlier. Okay. There's our unsorted array. Here's our code. Fantastic. Now let's give her a run through and see if she works. Two, three, five, eight, and nine. It is sorted. Okay, guys. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments, either here or on my site. Hope you learned something.